All right, you guys, so here is the next part of your video. I hope you all watch your frequently asked questions video to help clear up a couple of misconceptions. I'm going to actually post a couple of videos today. This is your first one. This is blending of quotations, okay? All right, so why do we need to blend the quotations? Well, our quotes should never stand alone, okay? And the next thing we have to do is provide the context of the quote. Think about context and the parameters of context clues. What's happening around that quote? What's happening around uh, what that character said? And the purpose of the context, it helps the readers to uh, gather and to remember the key and important information about that text. It helps us to truly understand that quotation. Now you have three ways to blend. The one that you guys are the most familiar with is the run-in quotation. This is where the quotation is introduced with a tag. Juliet exclaimed, the text state, and then you give us the quote, as you see right here. Think about the tagging as what you do on Instagram or Facebook when you're tagging that, uh, when you're tagging a picture to someone or you're tagging a post to someone. That is how the run-in quotation works. Now, the embedded quotation is when a quotation is inside of your sentence. It seems like it's a part of your own word. I mean, I'm sorry, your own and your original sentence. It does not have the tag. And then the block quotation is where you are using three or more lines from a quotation, and you've placed this in block form. Here's an example of the run-in um, quotation. As we see, we see our keyword saying. Now we know that this is uh, Justin who is talking to us, right? And this is the actual quote. Now pay attention right here. You see how we have three quotation marks? Here's the reason for that. When you're quoting a quote, you have to uh, set it apart by way of adding three quotation marks, okay? So when you're quoting a quote, you're going to set it apart by adding a single quotation mark to it. And when I mean quoting a quote, you're quoting what someone actually said. Here's an example of the embedded quotation. As you see, we do not have any tags, right? And this seems like this is part of the writer's original sentence. I want you to pay close attention right here. This is the MLA format. This is how you guys are going to give us the information for your um, where your quote came from, okay? Here's an example of the block quotation. All of this is one quotation. This is a quote that came from the text, okay? You can see right here, we have colons. Now, here are the rules for the block quotation. I'm going to let you pause. I'm going to let you write all this down because you need all of this. And then you're going to come back. All right. Thank you for taking the time to pause and write this down. Let's talk about quotation marks and its purpose and its rules, okay? Quotation marks are double and can be single. They are generally used for direct quotes. That means you're pulling from the text. You're using what the text said, word for word. We also use quotation marks around certain titles, such as our short story. And we're using it for words that are used in a special manner, slang, or when you want to emphasize certain things. A, a certain emotion for a certain word. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Quotation marks are always used in pairs. So you have to have an opening for the quote and a closing for the quote, okay? All right, so as I told you earlier, when we're quoting quotations, when, when you're quoting a quote, you need to use a single quotation marks for the quotation within the quotation. Here's an example right here. We put the single quotation marks first, 
And then we closed it with our double quotation, okay? And here's our here here is our tag. I'm sorry, our tag. Amelia asked. Ooh. So, where do you place the punctuation marks? And we know that every sentence must have a punctuation mark. Remember your jingle? A sentence, sentence, sentence is complete, complete, complete with five simple rules. It must meet, meet, meet. And we know a punctuation mark is part of it, okay? So we always place commas and periods inside, inside the quotation marks. We place semicolons and colons outside of the quotation marks. We place question marks and exclamation marks inside if they belong to that quotation, outside if they belong to your original sentence. Here are some things that we should avoid. avoid. Fragments and run-on sentences. Be sure that you're writing a complete sentence and your sentence expresses a complete thought. Pronoun disagreement. What that means is your pronouns must agree at all times. You cannot start a sentence off saying uh, something such as, we were running down the street. You use the pronoun we. And then in that same sentence, you're, you change it to she or he or it, okay? Now, you are allowed to change the words in a quotation mark if you need to, to, to help it mix, to help it. Uh, I'm so sleepy, you guys. And I know you can hear this in my voice that I am not doing well. However, I'll be at work tomorrow. You are allowed to change words in a quotation for the purpose of uh, your sentence. Of your, or for the purpose of that quotation flowing better, okay? You need to put brackets around the new word, the word that you changed from the original quotation. <coughs> All right, things to avoid. Subject, verb, agreement. Your subject and your verb must agree. And must agree. If your subject is single, then your verb must be single. Here is a tip. Verb, single verbs, single action verbs, always end in S. Capitalization. When you use a run-in quotation, always capitalize the first word of the quotation. Something I want us to work on this week is using T C S. T is for transitions, C is for context, S is for speaker. So transitions is simply how we move through our text. We want to move smoothly. We want the quotation to move, we want it to flow with our whole entire body paragraph. We don't want it to be choppy. We do not want it to interrupt the reader's thoughts. Okay? Context. What is happening in the story where that quotation appears? What's happening in that story? This is for you to just give us a brief overview of what's happening. And the speaker, you're going to tell us who said this quotation if it's dialogue, if someone was actually speaking. Who is the speaker? Remember, if a character does not say the quotation, then the speaker is simply the narrator, okay? All right, so if you have any questions, go ahead and send them to me. You can send them to me through Classroom Remind or come to class with your questions prepared, all right? All right, you all? Have a great day and remember, do your pre-work. Try this first and then come back to me with any questions or, or any struggles. Alrighty, see you later in the next video.